Implementing the energy efficient technology upgrades across a city like Orlando requires careful oversight. Today's guest leads a team of construction managers and control specialists. He helps identify and implement energy efficiency upgrades throughout the city's wide portfolio of buildings. Please welcome Ian Laheef, Energy Project Manager at the City of Orlando. Ian, I'm so glad you could join us today. Pleasure to be here. So Ian, let's talk about the kind of projects you're working on for the City of Orlando right now. Sure. As Energy Manager for the City of Orlando, I work with a team of uh, construction professionals and building automation technicians, and we oversee all the energy efficiency investments across 6.8 million square feet of space here at the City of Orlando. We start off by going into all of our portfolio of buildings and doing audits or assessments and taking inventory of the different equipment in each space, and then coming up with a roadmap on how to either approach, uh, retrofit, or remodel those spaces to be more energy efficient. So what kind of economic impact are we talking about on some of these projects you're looking at? Uh, the city utilizes a $17.5 million bond to fund all of these investments across our portfolio. And we aim to have $2.4 million in annual electricity savings by implementing a lot of these technologies like LED lighting, building automation systems, HVAC retrofits, and really just optimizing the systems to make sure that we're only lighting and cooling or heating the areas that we need to during the times that we need to. Uh, the two and a half million dollars in savings is not only used to pay down the debt on the bond, but there's a surplus built in so that we can pay for more energy efficient buildings. In fact, the surplus from this latest bond is going to help pay for the new Orlando Police Headquarters, which is a LEED Silver Certified facility. And we always talk about in construction how important those LEED Certified buildings are, and to build something like that is significant. How long is that project, when is that going to start, and how long will that project take? So that project actually just wrapped up last spring. Okay. Um, all of our city facilities meet LEED certification at a minimum. In fact, we have a new charge from the mayor as of this last summer that all city facilities need to be run solely off of renewable power by the year 2030. So we have our work cut out for us. We're going through all of our buildings, trying to optimize them the best we can, and then get to a point where we're making them net zero ready or solar ready as we build more buildings across the city. So talk about a project like that. What does it require? I mean, what kind of things do you have to do to go into new buildings, retrofits, to really make them certified like that? LEED certified, when sure. you're really looking at solar ready, all that, there's a lot of work entailed in that. And there definitely is. And there's, there's two approaches with the existing buildings. All of our buildings are existing and they're occupied. And we don't have another place to put the occupants, whether it's a community center or a fire station. And a lot of the times they have to maintain gotta make their people happy. Your residents, you're a, you got to make everybody happy when you're going in there. Exactly. So you can't just go in there and get the building and hope that they're going to be okay with it because they won't. We need to make sure that we're not only making it more energy efficient, but we're improving their operational value of the building too. So we talk to the fire department, we talk to the lieutenants and the chiefs, and we figure out how can we make the building work better for them. So we work with them and we see a lot of return on investment, not only from the energy side, but from the operational efficiency of the buildings as well. On the new construction side, you really have to have the collaboration up front. You can't be breaking ground, turning shovels, and then start to think, Hmm, should we go for lead certification on this building? Or maybe we want to make it net zero? It's got to be a plan right from the beginning. So Ian, tell us about then the, the data gathering that's entailed in that. Whenever we go into a building, whether it's a new construction or an existing facility, we want to make sure that we're making energy efficiency improvements, but then leaving the facility with measurement and verification technology, whether it's smart sensors or building automation, that can bring that data back to our energy management department. All of our facilities that undergo a renovation have building automation that can be remotely controlled from our building management group. Also, all the major equipment is tied into our submeters and our dashboard so that we can really understand how the data is being used, where we're saving the energy, and then make future data-driven decisions for new projects. Are you using this data then to build on and make those buildings, as you described, more energy efficient every moment? I mean, as you describe that, because that would seem that all those buildings are, are really doing something amazing. You're right. 
We call that in the engineering world retro commissioning. So constantly going into these facilities, tweaking how they work, just like you tune a race car engine, you want to make sure that you're optimizing the process and then going through the feedback loop of all the controls and evaluating, is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? Uh, the real next level that we see going past just building automation is being able to determine the total cost of ownership of our facilities. Energy efficiency and electricity is just one component of the expenses of running a building. You also want to take into account the work order systems, the labor that maintains the major equipment, and bring that all together, even as so far as the guy that goes out and works on a chiller and the refrigerant that goes into the chiller and his time and the fuel that goes into his truck or van. Bring all that information together, because then when you understand the big picture of the data, you might be able to show a better ROI on replacing some of that equipment and have even bigger returns. So Ian, you're describing, we always say that the workers out there don't necessarily contribute as much as they can, but the way technology is changing and the way construction is changing, it's going to totally revolutionize the way a building goes up in the future. That's what you've just described, that vocational schools are going to have a whole new way in contributing in some ways too, and how they teach some of their workers to what they'll be contributing into the way buildings are going up in the future. Do you see that as the way, in the way construction is going to play a role in the future, in the way a building goes up? I think it's absolutely critical. In fact, if somebody is working in building operation and maintenance, or even in the renovation and construction industry, and they're not taking into account the maintenance savings or the added value of having uh, a, an educated workforce that's working on those facilities, they're really missing the boat and they're missing out on a lot of savings. In fact, as the city of Orlando, we've worked with our surrounding technical colleges and they even instituted a two-year degree in building automation and energy management so that we can have a pipeline of people coming into this industry that are already up to speed on sensor technology, the internet of things, and have a hands-on working knowledge of how these building components work. So looking at the big scheme of things, do you think all of this information and the city of Orlando is going to be a model city for the future of what construction can be as going forward and years into the future? Certainly. We are already stepping on the scale and trying to lead by example. Uh, we have very transparent data. All of our facilities we upload to Energy Star, and anybody can take a look at what we're doing with all of our buildings. Uh, we try to really drive the needle forward on energy efficiency with our city facilities, and uh, we feel that we have resp responsibility to do so with taxpayer money. But we also want to be able to kind of push and inform the local industry and say, look, this can be done. It can be done in a cost effective manner. And we have the local talent to get it done and save money. And who doesn't want to save money? Is there challenges, though? Do you see the challenges behind getting companies and, and, and businesses behind what you're saying and citizens behind believing it? Sure. And at first, there was a really big reluctance to share data, just like nobody wants to go to the dentist or the doctor because they don't know what they're going to hear. When you're running a building, especially multiple different types of buildings, people are a little concerned about sharing that information or even kind of popping the hood and taking a look at how their building is running. Uh, we want to make sure that people understand it's critical to do so. Uh, you need to audit your building. Uh, ASHRAE has very refined audit techniques to go through, and we've done ASHRAE Level 2 audits on all of our facilities, and that's really kind of opened up a lot of savings opportunities that we wouldn't have otherwise looked at. So ultimately, if you can give the savings back to the residents and to the community, that's where the real benefits and the savings, and everybody wants to share data. We're in a generation of sharing information all the time. So you've just described when you can give it back, everybody wins, correct? We also want to be able to open up our data so that if there's other startups out there or tech firms or somebody coming out of college and has an idea that maybe they can take this database and come up with some better data-driven decisions, or maybe it's an app, or maybe it's a new software program that enhances the industry, we want to be able to uh, push that and make that flourish. Thank you, Ian Lahif, Energy Project Manager at the City of Orlando. That's Learn It.